Welcome to the Macmillan Report. I'm Marilyn Wilkes, your host, and our guest is T.L. Cowan, who is a writer, performer, activist, and a professor. She is currently at Yale as the Canadian Bicentennial Visiting Lecturer and Digital Humanities Fellow. Her academic work focuses on the cultural and intellectual economies and social lives of trans-feminist and queer grassroots performance. Today, we'll talk with Professor Cowan about her research on feminist and queer cabaret. Welcome, Professor Cowan. Hi. Thanks for having me. You are welcome. It is delightful um, for us to have you here today. Uh, your work is very interesting. Um, let's talk about the chapter you recently contributed to an anthology. Yes. Tell us about it. Okay. Um, well, it's a very exciting uh, anthology. It's um, uh, edited by Alison Campbell and Stephen Ferrier, and it's called Queer Dramaturges, where uh, performance leads queer. And uh, it's an anthology that is uh, I think one of my kind of most exciting contributions in terms of the um, the milieu that I'm being published in, and so it's uh, it's a collection of um, different perspectives on queer performance from really around the world, and it's one of the very very I think rare um, collections that really does look at many different places in the world mm -hmm. and where queer performance is happening, and so my. Um, my chapter, which has a very long title, um, which is something like a, a, a hybrid present embodified, mm -hmm. um, cabaret methods, and I think activist performance. And I'm looking at two performances in particular, mm -hmm. um, the performance of Cesar Enriquez um, from Mexico City, and his performance is called Dissertaciones de la Chingada. And um, the performance called Les Demi Monde, which is by Alexandra Tiglar, um, and who sh who's from Toronto. Um, and so my work is really um, uh, an exploration of hemispheric performance studies, in particular on uh, transgender feminist and queer cabaret performance. And by cabaret, I mean uh, the kind of political, satirical, adult-oriented variety show. Mm -hmm. And so both Enriquez and uh, Tiglar make um, political cabaret. And, and so the article chapter is making an argument for the ways that that cabaret performance seems to be a structure that's kind of uniquely conducive to um, critical citizenship, to political expression, and to um, bringing audiences around to the idea of social change. So what led you to be interested in this topic? Well, uh, I guess first and foremost, I am a participant of these cabaret cultures. Mm -hmm. uh, and so I have been a performer um, working in cabaret mm -hmm. since uh, the 1990s. Uh, and I've lived in a lot of different cities, and I've performed in a lot of different cities. And I have been an audience member of cabaret in a lot of different cities. And, you know, really over the last 20 years, I have seen um, just such remarkable similarity in cabaret performance in different locales. So mm -hmm. there's something very similar um, between the cabaret that's in Vancouver, Toronto, Montreal, New York, the Twin Cities, Los Angeles, San Francisco, uh, Mexico City, um, and, and in particular, I'm looking at North America. Mm -hmm. and, and so I have been working on this book project called Sliding Scale. Um, which is on cabaret cultures, mm -hmm. primarily in Montreal, New York, and Mexico City, but kind of more broadly across North America. And I, I guess my, my, my interest in the project is really to consider what is it about cabaret um, that is so compelling mm -hmm. to so many of these kind of politically engaged feminist and queer mm -hmm. uh, performance artists. And also to the audiences. Like it, it remains an incredibly political, vibrant, popular form in these communities mm -hmm. um, in ways that it's not in the mainstream. Mm -hmm. uh, and so that's really what I'm kind of looking at when I'm okay. studying cabaret. Let's talk about some of the similarities. Yes, of course. Okay, so really what you see a lot of um, is you see 
kind of structural similarities. So the varieties show structure. You have a, a, a master of ceremony, or uh, in, in the French we say uh, conférencier. And um, you have um, this master of ceremonies that will kind of bring the audience together and um, introduce the theme of the show. And often the theme of the show has something to do with um, uh, a kind of political theme, so it could be on um, kind of transgender awareness in feminist communities, for mm -hmm. example, is something that a cabaret might be. Um, and then you have lots of different kinds of performers. So someone might be doing um, a burlesque dance, someone might be doing stand-up comedy, someone might be doing um, spoken word performance, there might be some video, there might be someone playing piano, there could be some, mm -hmm. you know, modern dance. Um, and what happens is that there's a range of expertise. There's, uh, you know, the, the performers range in age, and, um, and some of them are very, very polished performers, and some are very amateur. Um, and the audiences are as diverse as what's happening on stage. Mm -hmm. And you also, one of the other really important similarities is the kind of media that um, is kind of attached to um, to cabaret in feminist and queer uh, communities. And so you see, you know, very similar kinds of posters, very similar kinds of really um, uh, kind of under-resourced documentation. Um, so it's very, it's an ephemeral form that doesn't have a lot of its own archives. Mm -hmm. um, and you also uh, see the way that cabaret gets promoted um, is really through word of mouth, through posters in kind of community bookstores when those still existed, mm -hmm. and uh, you know bars, coffee shops. People will hand around flyers. Oftentimes, um, cabarets will get promoted at big parties. So if you're doing a cabaret, you'll go to a party and you'll circulate mm -hmm. at some other place. Um, and even to the point of like these very ingenious ways that people promote their cabaret really deeply within a community is, for example. In, for the Meow Mix Cabaret uh, that um, a wonderful cabaret uh, producer and curator, Miriam Genestier, um, what she would do when she was starting her first queer women's um, cabaret in Montreal in the early 1990s, she advertised it in the Women Seeking Women personal ads. Oh, wow. And so it's, you know, mm -hmm. it's like it's very right. much about, you know, what's happening on stage, what's happening in the audience, but also what's happening kind of broadly within the community mm -hmm. and how cabaret kind of brings that all right. together. Here's a question. Do they ever use social media? Oh my gosh, yes, yes okay. of course, yes. So, um, and in fact, it's, I have to say that with the, um, with the popularity of something like Facebook, mm -hmm. you gain a lot. Yes. Um, and, and in fact, Facebook has become the kind of de facto archive mm -hmm. for a lot of these community-based ephemeral forms. And so that's really cool. So the Facebook page can stay up after the event, and people can upload their photos and things right. like that. And so that's really great. And you can invite thousands of people with one click mm -hmm. rather than, you know, 50 people with 50 flyers <laughs> at a bar, you <laughs> right. know? Um, it's much easier. It, it's easier, but it also loses that kind of face-to-face -face intimacy right. of some of the, the previous ways mm -hmm. of kind of mediating these, right, right. Um, these cabarets. So it's super great. Facebook, for example, and Twitter um, are, are great uh, for, you know, for promoting, but it has really transformed the way that cabaret functions mm -hmm. within communities. Yeah. Okay, one of the things you say that um, the, the cabaret is a translocal phenomenon. Yes. yes. So what do you mean by that? Okay, so translocal. You, you've heard of transnational, mm -hmm. which is across countries. Um, and the translocal um, is very similar and, and certainly related to the idea of the transnational. But the translocal uh, references the multidirectional circulation of ideas and people mm -hmm. um, between locations in ways that doesn't necessarily prioritize the nation or the national. Um, in, in the way that those bodies circulate. So it could be, translocal could be, um, for example, 
uh, studying cabaret across Vancouver, Montreal, Toronto, and Edmonton. So mm -hmm. that's within a country, but I'm looking at how this form works in these multiple locations mm -hmm. and really thinking about cabaret itself as the phenomenon that moves rather than people necessarily moving across those spaces. Right. And so you think about the cabaret structure, so this variety structure that remains very much intact um, across these places, even though the performers themselves are not moving. Right. Um, but then I also am looking at Mexico City, Montreal, and New York. And while each of those places um, have cabarets that differ slightly, the kinds of particularities and characteristics of the cabaret in each of those places has a lot to do with the cities that they're in, mm -hmm. as well as the countries that they're in. And so talking about the translocal is a way to kind of nuance those kinds of characteristics mm -hmm. and those particularities uh, in a way that the transnational doesn't uh, necessarily get at. Mm -hmm. So you um, chose Mexico City and Toronto for the book chapter. Exactly. Why is that? Because I saw these two performances, so Cesar Oniquez's uh, Dissertaciones de la Chingada and Alexander Teglar's um, Les Demi Mondes, and I could not believe how their use of what I call a trans temporal embodiment, <laughs> which, which means what? one of the <laughs> one of those, you know, kind of incredibly dense phrases that I use in this article. But um, trans temporal embodiment, what I'm talking about is the way that both Enriquez and Tiglar um, perform these figural fi figure, uh, figures, figural figures, these mythological figures. Okay. So in the case of uh, Enriquez, he's performing La Changada, which is a very um, a kind of common and popularly used figure in Mexico to refer to the kind of feminized Mexicanness in, as the, the kind of emerges through colonialization in the face of Spanish colonialization okay. of um, colonization of Mexico. Um, so you have La Chingada and then you have um, the, the figure that uh, Tiglar is performing which is prostitution herself. And both of these performers talk about I'm going to call I'm just going to say oppressive relations of power. So in mm -hmm. Enriquez's case he's talking about um, Spanish colonialism, U.S. imperialism, and narco-culture particularly as, um, uh, as a kind of ongoing way that Mexico is um, kind of being undermined um, and, and, and kind of experiencing violence um, mm -hmm. at the hands of these different kind of formations of power. And the way that Tiglar talks about, she uses prostitution herself um, to look at the ways that um, the role of the sex worker um, has been used as a cultural trope in, you know, e from every, everything from like La Taviata to mm -hmm. um, the police's Roxanne to Pretty Woman. Um, so you have the image of the sex worker who th that, that, that gets used um, to build these kind of fictional narratives mm -hmm. that become very kind of sensational and popular, popular. And people get very famous, like Julie Roberts, mm -hmm. gets very famous for playing these roles, whereas um, people who are sex workers in real life remain criminalized, right. remain targets for police and other violence. And so both of these performers, having never seen each other, never heard about each other, um, are doing something very similar in the way that they're tracing these kind of political structures mm -hmm. and experiences of um, of negative relations of power, negative experiences of power through long histories um, on the stage um, using humor, using um, kind of body dancing, using video, using you know all mm -hmm. sorts of other things right. but they both do this. Right, interesting. Um, and uh, you know part of what you write about is um, activism that comes out yes. of cabaret. So let's talk about a couple of specific examples about that. Okay, well, I mean, both of the, the performers that I talk about in this essay are really doing activist performance. Um, and by activism, 
what I what I mean is sometimes it's very explicit. Like sometimes you'll have a performer get up on stage and do a political rant about mm -hmm. um, about uh, an issue that's important to them. Mm -hmm. um, and then, uh, and so that's you know one form of activism on stage in cabaret. But then you also have performances that are activist in a way that's like slightly more subtle. And what these performances do is they draw audiences' attention to political problem or issue, um, and kind of model a way. And an, uh, what they do is they model an analysis mm -hmm. of this political issue or political problem. Um, in a way that allows us to think about the possibility for social change. Mm -hmm. um, and so, for example, just in the case of Alexandra Tigler's piece, for example, one of the things that Les Demi Monde does um, by the end of the hour or so of this, this performance that has many different episodes in mm -hmm. it, many different scenes or skits, um, by, the end of that, by the end of that performance, the audience really thinks, oh, you know, I maybe hadn't really thought about what it means to be criminalized as a sex worker and what it means to have the thing that you're doing as work be um, also making you a, a target for incarceration and um, other kinds of kind of legal um, procedures. And, and so then in, in Canada, for example, um, that kind of activism created an opportunity for a kind of popular understanding of the importance of decriminalizing sex work. Mm -hmm. um, and so in Canada, um, sex work was decriminalized and <laughs> then recriminalized. Um, oh, really? okay. but, um, <laughs> but this kind of, so, but this kind sure. of work, um, not only just, it's activist in the way that it builds a kind of a built-in understanding mm -hmm. um, across audiences. Um, and then, you know, if you were to see that show, for example, you might go home and say to your partner or to your mother, you know, I saw this performance and I never really thought about mm -hmm. this, but I'm going to think about it some more. Right. And so I think that's really the way that, that Cabaret functions in an activist way. And um, there's a, a, a famous um, line from uh, Friedrich Hollander, who is a great cabaretist um, from the Weimar area of, era of Germany. And he, he talks about the cabaret functioning in a political way as um, kind of uh, g serving you a poison cookie. So you'll be watching this like, kind of um, kind of innocuous performance. It's entertaining. You're laughing, maybe. Um, uh, and you're not really thinking that you're being taught something, mm -hmm. but you're being asked to think, and then all of a sudden there'll be some kind of a, he talks about a political chanson, or there'll be some element that, that kind of gets you thinking, and then you don't even really realize that it's happened mm -hmm. until three days later when you think, oh, I think I digested something that made me think, you right, know? Right, right, And yeah. so that's the way that I think cabaret functions yes. as, as activism. Okay, so what, what do you conclude in your piece? I, I guess I, I conclude just that, that um, first of all, you know, I think cabaret gets undermined as a cultural um, formation mm -hmm. uh, because it's often very amateur and it happens not in grand theaters but in bookstores and in, you know, kind of like home basements and backyards and, um, and but yet it's doing some very important cultural work mm -hmm. and that it does um, create um, possibilities for social change and for thinking about the possibilities for mm -hmm. social change. So rather than um, rather than thinking that things always have to be the way they are, cabaret allows us to kind of imagine or hope for mm -hmm. um, a shifting in um, in the way things are. Okay. Yeah. Very good. Thank you so much for being Thank here today. Thank you very much. And for Marilyn. some of your research. Thank you. For more information about Professor Cowan and her work, please visit our website at macmillanreport.yale.edu. Be sure to join us again for another episode of the Macmillan Report, made possible through funding from the Whitney and Betty Macmillan Center for International and Area Studies at Yale.